Welcome to the deep dive. We're here to uh, really cut through all that noise around modern technology. There's just so much out there. Exactly. Especially with AI tools like GitHub Copilot popping up and changing how we work. It feels like you need a full-time job just to stay informed, right? You can get totally swamped. It's a real challenge. And that's, well, that's why we're doing this. This deep dive is all about pulling out those key bits of knowledge. Yaha aha moments. Yes. Those aha moments, giving you a clearer path to understanding GitHub Copilot properly without, you know, drowning you in information, just practical insights. Absolutely. And we're not just going to skim the surface. Like, what does it do? Yeah. We want to get into how it's built to work safely, effectively, and um, why those design choices really matter for you. And the angle we're taking is, I think, quite interesting. We're looking at it through the lens of the official co-pilot certification exam. Right, because the exam itself kind of maps out what's important. Precisely. It highlights what GitHub sees as, well, fundamental, the critical stuff users need to grasp. It tells you what's essential. Okay, so what are the basics of the exam itself? Well, uh, it's web-based, online proctored, takes about 100 minutes, give or take. Okay. And you're looking at around 50 to 60 multiple choice questions. In the past, Mark. 70%. It's available globally to English, Spanish, Portuguese for Brazil, Japanese, and Korean. Wow. Okay. So even just that basic structure, like you said, gives us clues about what they think is really crucial knowledge. Let's uh, let's unpack some of that. Let's do it. So thinking about companies using tools like Copilot, a huge question always comes up first, right? Yeah. What about our own code? Our IP? Exactly. How do we stop our proprietary stuff ending up in some big public model? And this brings us straight to a key feature the exam focuses on, content exclusion, specifically for GitHub Copilot for business. Okay, content exclusion. That sounds important for any company using this. What does it actually do? How does it tackle those privacy or IP worries? Right. So it's not just about like deleting telemetry data after the fact. Mm -hmm. The core idea is really strategic. It lets you mark specific repositories, the ones with your sensitive proprietary code, and prevents that content from ever being used to train co-pilot models or showing up in suggestions for anyone else. Ah, okay. So it never even sees it for training purposes. Exactly. It's fundamental for protecting a company's secret sauce, you know, avoiding IP leaks. It's a core security and privacy control for businesses. Got it. So it's like putting up a wall around your internal code within the AI's learning process. That must be a big relief for companies. Definitely. Okay, so that covers protecting code from getting out. But what about the other way around? Using all the valuable internal stuff a company already has. You mean like internal docs, coding standards? Yeah, exactly. Think about a big company, tons of internal libraries, specific ways of doing things. A new developer starts, how do they get Copilot to understand that specific world? Yeah. Not just general coding. Ah, well, this is where the enterprise knowledge base integration comes in, and it's highlighted in the exam prep, too. Okay, how does that work? It's uh, it's pretty powerful. It lets Copilot Chat connect directly to a company's own internal documentation, their knowledge bases. So it learns the company's specifics. Essentially, yes. Users get suggestions and information that aren't just generic, but are actually relevant to their company's context, their internal APIs, even their specific coding policies. That makes a huge difference. It really does. It basically turns Copilot from a general helper into an expert on that specific company. Big boost for productivity, accuracy, especially for internal teams. Makes perfect sense. You're leveraging the knowledge you already have, just making it accessible through the AI. Okay. And speaking of using AI well, there's this whole area of responsible AI. Mm -hmm. A big part of that is knowing the limits, right? Not just what the tool can do, but what it can't. Mm. The exam seems to stress this with the principle of transparency. Yes. Transparency is key. So how does Copilot actually communicate its limitations? And why is that so important for building trust? Well, it's classic transparency in action. It means being clear with users about how the AI works and, just as importantly, admitting its limitations. Being upfront. Exactly. When Copilot is honest about what it can and can't handle well, it helps manage expectations. Users trust it more because they know it's not pretending to be perfect. Right. You don't want people thinking it's magic. No. It's about giving users the full picture, honestly, so they can use the tool effectively and responsibly instead of you know, expecting it to solve every single problem flawlessly. Building trust through clarity. Absolutely essential, I agree, for any AI tool we bring into how we work. Okay, let's switch focus a bit to the user side. How can you, the person using Copilot, get the best results? 
We hear a lot about prompt engineering. Mm -hmm. What's a good practice there? How do you write prompts to really make Copilot suggestions better? It really boils down to um, giving clear instructions and providing specific examples really helps guide the response. Why does that matter so much though? It sounds simple. Well, think about asking a human assistant for help. The clearer you are, the more detail you give, the better they understand what you need, right? True. Same principle here. If your prompt is vague or super short, Copilot has to guess more, and the output is likely to be less relevant, less accurate. The quality of what you put in directly affects the quality of what you get out. So maybe not quite garbage in, garbage out, but definitely fuzzy input in, fuzzy suggestions out. Something like that, yeah. I remember spending ages debugging something once, only to realize my first prompt was just way too ambiguous. Really drove home how vital clear instructions are. Okay, on the, on the other side of the coin, where does Copilot tend to fall short? Where is it least effective? Like, is it bad at boilerplate code or maybe refactoring? Actually, it's pretty good at things like boilerplate, helping with refactoring, even writing basic unit tests. That's kind of its sweet spot. Okay, so where does it struggle? Where it really has trouble is understanding um, complex, very specialized, or unique business logic, especially if you don't give it clear examples. Ah, the really niche stuff specific to one company or domain. Exactly. It's great for common coding patterns and tasks, but it just doesn't have that deep, nuanced knowledge for highly intricate business rules that are unique to your situation. Unless you feed it enough context, enough examples, it simply can't generate accurate code for those really niche cases. That's a key limitation to be aware of. That's a really crucial distinction. Knowing where the AI shines and where, you know, human expertise and clear guidance are still absolutely needed. Right. Okay. One last technical point that seems important based on the exam focus. The public code filter. Right, the filter. If you have that turned on, how does Copilot deal with suggestions that look a lot like code that's already out there publicly? Does it just warn you? It's more proactive than just a warning. When that filter is enabled, it actually blocks the suggestion from appearing directly and warns the user. Blocks it completely. Yeah. Wow. Yes. And that's critical. It's there to stop you accidentally duplicating public code, which could lead to all sorts of licensing headaches or IP issues. So it's a safety net. A really important one, it proactively stops suggestions that are too similar to public code, protecting users from inadvertently copying something they shouldn't. It's a vital layer of protection. So thinking about all this, mm -hmm. if Copilot is great at general tasks but needs a lot of help with that really specialized, unique business logic, unless you feed it examples, it does make you think, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. What does that tell us about you know, where human expertise fits in with AI? Exactly. How do you listening see those unique human problem-solving skills, that deep domain knowledge, complementing these powerful AI tools as they continue to evolve? Where's that intersection going? 